shake the globe. Who wants to think versus flat? Go right ahead. Hey guys, Fat Shank here. Today we're going to talk about gravity. What is gravity? You have no idea. Okay, next question. <laughs> Wow. No, here's the difference. We can describe gravity. Okay. We can say what it does to other things. We can we can measure it, predict with it. But when you start asking, like, what it is, I, I, I don't know. So what is gravity? Well, according to the heliocentric model, gravity is the force that attracts a body towards the center of the Earth or towards any other physical body having mass. Their claim is that a large mass bends the fabric of space. But space is simply the absence of matter, so how do you bend nothing? It's like Tesla said, to say that in the presence of large bodies space becomes curved is the equivalent to stating that something can act upon nothing. But the real question is, can they prove their claims using the scientific method? Well, as far as I know, all they have is an old experiment from the 1700s called the Cavendish experiment. But I believe this experiment is a fraud, and the reason is rather simple, because the torsion rod reacts to even the currents of the air conditioning in the room. It would be very difficult to try to put controls on it in such a way that normal currents of air that are present all the time would not affect the results. There does exist a sealed version of this experiment, but I have yet to see sufficient evidence that it works. Uh, this experiment really is very difficult to get to work, and a, a technician has sorted apart so because he got so frustrated. Because he got so frustrated. So, do flat earthers have a better explanation? Well, your average flat earther might tell you that gravity is simply density and buoyancy. While relative density is mostly responsible, there is also a weak downward force that determines direction. It's important to remember that science can prove the force of gravity, but they cannot prove the source of gravity. You see, to calculate buoyancy, you take the volume of the object times the density of the surrounding fluid times the force of gravity. So if large masses don't bend space, then what is this force and where is it coming from? Well, there is an alternative. Tesla called it universal compression. A good example for such an interaction becomes apparent in gravitation, which should rather be named universal compression. I think the material bodies do not gravitate between each other, but it is the ether that makes one material body to press to another. We wrongly call this phenomenon gravitation. But Tesla mentions the ether. Hasn't that been debunked? Well, if I'm right, the ether is actually Earth's magnetic field. Isaac Newton described the ether as a medium that flows continually downward towards the Earth's surface and is partially absorbed and partially diffused. On the flat Earth model, the magnetic field rotates, oscillates, and flows continually downward towards the Earth's surface. And since everything on Earth is diamagnetic, we are repelled by the field. Every material in the world is diamagnetic. So everything repels a magnet. There's just that some materials also attract a magnet stronger than it repels it, like iron. And so what that means is if you had a strong enough magnetic field, you could levitate an animal in it. And that's actually been done before. They've levitated frogs in magnetic fields before. And it doesn't hurt the animal at all because it's repelling every single cell in their body with the same force. And so they don't feel an overall force at all. There is no problem with uh, putting a man to force a man by this magnetic levitation to fly in the air. So technically, we can do it with you without any problems. But what about paramagnetic and ferromagnetic materials? Because diamagnetic materials are always pushed 
towards the weak part of the field. It's only paramagnetic materials and ferromagnetic materials that experience a force towards the strong part of the field if the field itself is non-uniform. So what's the weakest and strongest part of the field? Well, according to Anne-Marie Helmenstein, the magnetic field of a bar magnet is strongest at either pole of the magnet. It is equally strong at the north pole when compared to the south pole. The force is weaker in the middle of the magnet and halfway between the pole and the center. So basically on the flat earth model, this would be the strongest part of the field and this area here in the middle would be the weakest part. So to recap, everything on earth is repelled towards the earth's surface. This applies to paramagnetic and ferromagnetic materials too, except they are also attracted towards the strongest part of the field, like a compass for example. Now let's compare both theories and see which one makes more sense. Notice the mouse on the left is repelled in real time. The Cavendish experiment on the other hand, well, not so much. It's important to keep in mind that water and even the atmosphere are also diamagnetic. See how it's starting to move away? <laughs> If you'd like more information on how Earth's magnetic field is generated, I suggest you check out this video. Thanks for watching guys. Please leave a comment below and keep it flat. See ya. I know you're out there. I can feel you now. I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here 